Hello, it's Mrs. Red with the UA Cochise County Cooperative Extensions WaterWise Youth Program. And today I'm going to be doing a book reading. And uh, this isn't just any book reading, I'm reading my favorite book since childhood. And in addition, this is probably the last lesson um, that I will be giving with the WaterWise program um, as I'm moving on to future endeavors and will be replaced by the lovely Miss Miller, who you may have already been introduced to. So for those of you that know me, hello. Um, thank you very much for everything. I'm gonna miss all you kiddos, and I hope that you get to watch me read my favorite book. So today's book is The Big Orange Splot by Daniel Manis Pinkwater. I have loved this book since my childhood. Now you may be wondering, what does this have to do with WaterWise? Well, don't worry, I'll explain later. All right, and also, at the end of this book, we will have an activity that we can do together, which is why you may have noticed I have some paper behind me and I also have some markers. So if you'd like to prepare in advance, and go get some paper and some crayons or some colored pencils, you can feel free to do that. Or you can wait until I'm done with this book and we can do some drawing together, all right? So let's go ahead and get started. The Big Orange Splot by Daniel Manis Pinkwater. Mr. Plumbing lived on a street where all the houses were the same. He liked it that way. So did everybody else on Mr. Plumbing's street. This is a neat street, they would say. Then, one day, A seagull flew over Mr. Plumbing's house. He was carrying a can of bright orange paint. No one knows why. And he dropped the can, no one knows why, right over Mr. Plumbing's house. It made a big orange splot on Mr. Plumbing's house. Oh, too bad, everybody said. Mr. Plumbing will have to paint his house again. I suppose I will, said Mr. Plumbing, but he didn't paint his house right away. He looked at the big orange splot for a long time, and then he went about his business. The neighbors got tired of seeing that big orange splot. Someone said, Mr. Plumbing, we wish you'd get around to painting your house. Okay, said Mr. Plumbing. Hmm. He got some blue paint and some white paint. And that night he got busy. He painted at night because it was cooler. When the paint was gone, the roof was blue. The walls were white and the big orange splot was still there. Then he got some more paint. He got red paint, yellow paint, green paint, and purple paint. In the morning, the other people on the street came out of their houses. Their houses were all the same, but Mr. Plumbing's house was like a rainbow. It was like a jungle. It was like an explosion. There was the big orange splot, and there were little orange splots, and there were stripes, there were pictures of elephants, and lions, and pretty girls, and steam shovels. The people said Plumbing has popped his cork, flipped his wig, blown his stack, and dropped his stopper. They went away muttering. It was all Mandy's crazy. That day, Mr. Plumbing bought carpenter's tools. 
That night, he built a tower on top of his roof and he painted a clock on the tower. You see all that? Elephants, my favorite animal. And here it is with the tower. The next day, the people said, Plum Bean has dusted his mush, lost his marbles, and slipped his hauser. They decided they would pretend not to notice. That very night, Mr. Plum Bean got a truck full of green things. He planted palm trees, baobabs, thorn bushes, onions, and frangy pan. I think that's how you say that. In the morning, he bought a hammock and an alligator. When the other people came out of their houses, they saw Mr. Plumbing swinging in a hammock between two palm trees. They saw an alligator lying in the grass. Mr. Plumbing was drinking lemonade. has gone too far. This used to be a neat street. Plumbing, what have you done to your house? The people shouted. My house is me and I am it. My house is where I like to be and it looks like all my dreams, Mr. Plumbing said. The people went away. They asked the man who lived next door to Mr. Plumbing to go and have a talk with him. Tell him that we all liked it here before he changed his house. Tell him that his house has to be the same as ours, so we can have a neat street. What do you think's gonna happen? The man went to see Mr. Plumbing that evening. They sat under the palm trees, drinking lemonade and talking all night long. Early the next morning, the man went out to get lumber and rope and nails and paint. When the people came out of their houses, they saw a red and yellow ship next door to the house of Mr. Plumbing. <laughs> what have you done to your house? They shouted at the man. My house is me and I am it. My house is where I like to be and it looks like all my dreams, said the man who had always loved ships. He's just like plumbing, the people said. He's got bees in his bonnet, bats in his belfry, and knots in his noodle. Then one by one, they went to see Mr. Plumbing late at night. They would sit under the palm trees and drink lemonade and talk about their dreams. And whenever anybody visited Mr. Plumbing's house, the very next day, that person would set about changing his own house to fit his dreams. This is my favorite part. Now this is what the houses on the street look like. Somebody made their house into an heirloom house. Ooh, somebody made theirs like the, like the Taj Mahal. Somebody made theirs a castle with even a moat around it. Somebody made theirs very Grecian. Look, <laughs> Mr. Plumbing. <laughs> and there's that street. Whenever a stranger came to the street of Mr. Plumbing and his neighbors, the stranger would say, this is not a neat street. And all the people would answer, our street is us and we are it. Our street is where we like to be and it looks like all our dreams. Then you may have noticed some of these pages are a little dirty. That's because I've been reading this book for over 30 years. <laughs> this is a very old book. I hope you loved it as much as I do. And I wonder, what is your takeaway from this book? My takeaway from this book 
is that it's really important to follow your dreams and not worry so much what other people think. And how am I going to turn this into a water wise lesson? Well, let me tell you. One of the hard things about being water wise is not everybody is water wise. Some people don't think it's important to save water. And sometimes you might even do really cool things to your house so that you can save water, like installing a gray water system with your laundry machine so that you can use your laundry water to feed your plants, or getting big tanks to fill with rainwater um, from your roof so that you can use that to water your plants and wash your car and do other things. But you know what? If you're following your dreams and doing something that's important to you, you know what? Don't worry about them. All right? That's what I got in this book. So what I would like you guys to do and what I'm about to do, what do you think? We're going to draw our dream house. All right? So go ahead, if you haven't already, go get some paper and go get some either colored pencils or crayons or if you have, only have markers like me, go ahead and get some markers. And why don't you go ahead and draw your dream house? Now this house can be whatever you want. Somebody made their house into a castle. Some people made their house into a balloon. Some people made their house a boat. And then of course there was Mr. Plumbing who just made his house look like crazy dreams. Whatever you want, it's your dreams. My dream house is gonna save water, obviously, but it's also gonna look like my dreams, all right? So we'll get your stuff. I'm gonna start drawing my dream house. When you're done drawing your dream house, why don't you take a picture of it for me? And why don't you post it in the comments? Because you know, I would love to see your dream house. So let's get started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I always thought it would be really cool to have a Hobbit house. If you've ever seen The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings, you'll know that their house is almost either like underground or part of trees and really cool kind of part of the earth. So I think I'm going to start with that. All right. The ground and the big hill. And maybe the start of the tree. some windows, don't you? I like fireplaces, do you? I want to go see. All right, let's put this up higher. Yeah. There we go. I'm 
I just thought red doors are really neat. I'm gonna make my door red. windows. How big is this hill? Must be a big hill. All right. So what can I do to my house to make it so that it saves water? Hmm. Well, what's neat about it is if it has grass on top when it rains, let's make some clouds. All right. So if it rains, it will rain down on some grass. Maybe I can have some really cool high-tech thing underneath here that makes it so that when rain comes down, the parts that go further down beyond the roots of the grass can maybe get collected. Hmm, that's a neat idea. Or maybe make it so that it'll feed water to this tree. Let's make this more of a tree. Can you imagine living in a house that's in a hill? That'd be really cool. I heard that if you go to New Zealand, they have a real hobbit town where they have houses that are in the hills just like they do in the fictional series, uh, The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. I gotta go there one day, I gotta check that out. All right, let's make some brick. My little chimney here. some purple curtains. Should I put my rainwater tank? Because I think it's definitely a good idea to collect some rainwater. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe I'll make it so that the this little area here has a gutter. Right up here. So that when it does rain, and the rain comes down, instead of just going right over the hill, it'll go into this little gutter. And the water will get stuck in here, maybe come down here, and go into a big rain tank. Also called a cistern. So let's just call it a rain tank. All right, cool. And there's all kinds of cool things we could do with that water. I could use that to help me 
if it's maybe there's a drought and there's not hasn't been rain for a while i could use all the water that i collected during any of the storms that year to maybe help feed that tree or if i have a garden i'll make a garden if i have a garden of all kinds of plants and vegetables and herbs and fruit can use the rain in my rain tank, the little hose, to help me feed my plants. What kind of plants should I draw? What kinds of plants? So I hope that if you maybe were intimidated when I said we should do this because you're like, I don't draw that well, I hope this makes you feel better. <laughs> you don't have to draw awesome to enjoy drawing. All kinds of little bushes. Things with different kinds of leaves. Tomatoes. You just draw a bush with lots of stuff. You have a vine. <laughs> I can't wait to see your drawings. I hope they're better than mine. And even if they're not, I can't wait to see them. Let's see. What does it look like to you guys? Cool. More things with big leaves. Things with lots of branches and little leaves. So I have to add all the green to my plants. All right, so I see some. I'm going to add some tomatoes over there. That looks maybe like it's some lettuce. I love zucchini. I should make a zucchini plant. What is that? Big leaves, I think. Big leaves. Alright. Let's add some green to my plants. So there's my garden. I use rain. I catch it with this gutter here. I use this rain to help me feed my plants. And we're going to pretend I have some kind of really cool system underneath all of the grass that also collects water and directs it to this tree. And if I want it, I could use my laundry machine inside and take the water from my laundry machine using really special detergents and make it so that that water goes out and feeds my plants too. I can do all kinds of stuff. It's really, it's, there's all kinds of cool things you can do to be water wise. Plus, of course, when I take showers, I can make sure that I only take my showers for about five minutes most of the time. All kinds of different things you can do, right? All right. Well, I think that's good for me for now. You can go ahead, keep drawing. I really hope to see your drawings. Please post some pictures of them for me and put them in the comments because I really want to see them. I hope you enjoyed my book, The Big Orange Slot by Daniel Manis Pinkwater. Again, I've had this book for over 30 years. It's been my favorite book ever since I was pretty little. I'm still little, but I mean like young little. All right, so. Again, I'm Mrs. Red with the WaterWise Youth Program. Thank you very much for watching this live video today. Or if you're not watching it live, thank you for watching it at all. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And please remember to do your best to be WaterWise. Thanks.